Hello everybody, Jesse here from Jesse Inspired. How are you guys all doing? So I promise you guys that the next video I'll be doing, we'll be talking about the, the weight system core. But um, I did a little review on the previous video where I talked about the frog system core and I realized some things that we are in so accurate. You know, the parts where I talked about um, the zombie state and all that. So I'm going to dedicate this video right now to correct that so that we have a firmer foundation while approaching or seeking to understand how the weight system core works. So um, I hope you guys can forgive me. All right. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right, guys. So in our previous video, I actually made a statement when I was seeking to understand how this code right here was working, how our process was actually working. And um, I made a statement that when the child process actually is done executing, it doesn't return back to the shell process, you know, because it can't find the, um, the PPID, the parent process ID in the memory. Well, that statement wasn't actually correct because what you're seeing right here with my cursor blinking is actually a representation of the shell program, the same shell program actually. So I'm just going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to type in a simple terminal command like ls. So if I type in ls, I should expect that if this is actually the shell program running, it should list out the, the list of files and directories within this my present working directory. So I'm going to type in enter and realize that right now we actually listed out the list of files and directories inside my present working directory. So um, the explanation which I gave wasn't so accurate because for it to be accurate, everything must be accurate. Okay, so there's actually an explanation as to what's happening right here. And I'm going to show you guys right now. All right, guys. So um, to fully understand what's happening right here, I'm going to introduce a system call called sleep. All right. So what this guy will just do is that to help slow down the execution of our code. So we are able to observe what's happening under the hood. And... Um, to get started, I'll just open up this my file fork that see. So I already deleted some um some of the text which was here, so our lives are much more easier. Alright, so right now I want to be able to find a way to distinguish between the parent and the child because I want to observe them carefully to understand what's happening. And to do that, I'm going to take advantage of the return value of the fork system call. Now, if you recall from our previous um video. We learned that the um, first system call returns zero in the child. And just in case you're wondering where that came from, from here, here in the man page, so if I check the return value, you will see that on success, can you see this? On success, zero is returned in the child. So we're going to take advantage of this piece of information right here in our code. So I'm going to say right here, if PID is zero, it means that right now I'm in the child. I want to put the child to sleep for a while. Let's just um, observe what's happening. So I'm going to do a sleep. Let's put it to sleep for like, um, let's say 10 seconds. Or let's say 5 seconds for now. 5 seconds is good. Next, I'm going to do a print F. I'm going to say um, I am the child. Just like that. All right, so now I'm going to run a simple else statement. So else would imply that I'm in the parent, isn't it? So um, the first if block um, actually specifies just in case this our code fails. Right here is if you're in the child. So what I want to write now in this else block would be um, the parent, the case for the parent process. So I'm going to do a simple print f. I am the parent. So um, if this our code is correct, what we should expect is that when our code runs, what will happen is that the parents will run first. So this will get printed out and then the child will kick in. But before the child is executed or before this print F statement begins to execute, it's going to wait for like five seconds, isn't it? Before it gets printed out, I am the child. So let's just observe that. Clear. And um, GCC. Okay, so this looks good. Let's run this. Okay, so right now I am the parent that has been printed out. So we're waiting for five seconds. And then you realize that I am the child was printed out right here. And then my cursor actually moved here. And like I told you guys, I am back at my shell program or at my shell process. So if I run 
echo dollar dollar any shell command basically would work you realize i'm back at the shell process so let's now analyze what's what what, what was happening you know before i am the child was actually printed out right here on the terminal so to understand this i will need to also introduce to you a new command or maybe new to some of you but it's the ps command so what ps does is that it just lists out the um the current processes within our terminal so i'm gonna do a man ps so you'll be able to see it for yourself so it says right here ps report a snapshot of the current processes so it, it literally gives us a snapshot of all the processes that are running within our terminal so um, let me just give you guys a feel of the ps command so i'm going to do a simple ps with these flags eaf so you can read the man pages to understand what these flags does but i'm just going to hit enter and i'm going to scroll to the top so i have a list of all the processes that are running within this my terminal so this is actually called the process table okay so where i have a bunch of information about the processes that are actually being you know executed so right now i have the first um column right here says uid or user id pid is a second ppid is the third and then we have a bunch of others which we are not so concerned about okay i think we'll also be concerned about this one the cmd has to do with the command that we are run you understand for our processes to um, get started let me just scroll to the bottom and do something so um let's go to the bottom and let me show you something right here so right here if you if you if you observe you see that we have this rule right here that actually contains information about the um the, the instance of the bash program that is being executed this bash program right here or this bash process so if you look right here it tells us that the pid because you know if you remember the the second column was actually for pid and um the third was actually for the ppid the parents the pid right here is 4398 so just to prove to you that this is actually accurate i'm going to do an echo dollar dollar all right so you're seeing that it's actually 4398 so um we are going to be needing this information to understand how our code is actually working so just join me right now let me head over to our file and let's make some modifications so i would open up my work.c file and make some changes to it to illustrate what we are doing um the first change is that i'm going to introduce a new variable ppid so what this variable will do is that it will help hold the the process id of the parent all right so later when we are running this code we are going to actually compare it to what we have in our process table by running this ps command right here and then we would you know we will be able to see and understand what's happening under the hood second change is that i'm going to change this from um sleep five seconds or something like 40 seconds okay so we'll be able to observe everything closer and better then next is that i'm going to store right here I'm going to do a get pid right here so i'll be storing the pid of the parent inside this variable ppid so when this code runs and it gets to the parent it's going to come right here and execute this get pid and it's going to store the value of the uh, of the parent's id inside this um inside this uh, variable right here ppid all right so now i just want to print out that the pid of the parent i'm going to say um parents pid is um i think that'll be good percent you and then i'm going to come right here and write ppid just like that so everything looks good for now let's run this all right so let's execute this so it tells me parents pid is 5557 so I want you guys to take note of this, the parent PID. So, um, and then the second thing is that I return back to my shell process. The third thing is that the child is still on sleep for 40 seconds. So it will give me enough time to type in this, my command PSEAF. And this time around, I'm going to add a pipe. So I just want to filter out um, the fork process, which is currently running. Now, take note of this. So I just, you know, so I don't have to print out the whole process. table. that's why I actually applied this right here. But if you realize what's happening from what we learned earlier, 
the first column gives us the user id the second column gives us the process id so i am the child just showed up right here emphasizing that the 40 second sleep timer has elapsed okay so back to this so the third column actually gives us the parent process id of this current process all right so i should expect that the uh, while this code is running the pp id should be um 5577 isn't it because if you check it out the pid is 5558 all right so i should expect that the pp id should be 5557 which you see right here all right but if you check this out current did the pp id changed to one all right so we know that we are in our current default process because you're seeing the command which was called to execute so this last column gives us the command that was actually called to execute or to spawn our process but the thing to take note of is that during execution the ppid of the child process changes from the original parent id to one all right so i hope you guys got that the second thing to take note of is that if i run this command again right now that the child has finished executing if i run the same command again to check for my child in the in the process table if i hit enter you realize that i no longer can see the child process in my process table so i'm seeing a bunch of other stuff right here but check this out i don't see the child process right now anymore all right so the two things i want you guys to take note of is this number one Parent ID of child process changes to one during execution. The second thing is that the child process is removed from the process table after execution. All right, so let me try to explain what's happening under the hood. So I'm going to open up my file fork.c. So I hope you guys are on board. Okay, so uh, right here, um, the first thing is that when this code runs, the parent, to, it will be the parent process which will be executing. So it's going to come right here, get the PID of the parent, and then print it out, which you have right here. The next thing is that um, the parent, it's, um, okay, so once it's done printing it out right here, it's going to return. The parent will return back to its parent, which happens to be the shell um, process which was running right here. All right, so that's why it returned and then it came right here. The child process right now was um, began to run. And when we came right here, we did this if checks just to check if we're on the child process. And then once we entered inside this if block, the child process waited for 40 seconds. And that's why um, there was the, um, the shell prompt right here. And then the child process actually took 40 seconds before I am the child was printed out. Now, what explains the change of the PPID during execution of the child is that because the parent process returns from the main function, it becomes terminated, isn't it? It becomes terminated. So um, the parent process actually leaves the process table. When the parent process leaves the process table, yet the child process is still running because it was still sleeping for 40 seconds, what happens is that there is something within your process table within this your terminal called the init process, which happens to be the very first process that is spawned when you actually boot your, your system. So if I open up this place where I have some notes about it, so it says that the init process is actually the parent of all processes executed by the, by the kernel during the booting of the system. It has a PID of one. So what happens is that the child when the parent is done executing it actually terminates and the child process becomes an orphan so last time i called it a zombie process which is actually something different what you're seeing right there is actually an orphan process right here an orphan process and an orphan process is simply a running process whose parent has finished or terminated so the child process was still sleeping for 40 seconds but at the same time what happened was that at that time the parent had already finished executing and was terminated. So what happened was that the init process adopted that orphan and became the parent of that orphan process until the time of execution. So if I come right here, let me just open, run this my PS again, EAF. If you realize that the parent's ID of the child changed to one because 
the PID of the init process is actually one. So if I come right here, you will see that this is actually the command that spawns the init process when you boot your system. You can see right here, init. All right, so I think that stands for initialize or something. The PID of, of the init process is actually one. So the init process adopts that child until the time of execution. That's why while it was sleeping, the child process had a, had, um, a PPID of one because the init process adopted it as the child. Now what happens is that when that child is done executing, all right, and exits the process table, what happens is that this init is the one that actually rips the child off the process table. So once the child is done executing and you return from the main function, this init process actually removes that child from the process table. And that's why when I executed that PSEF again, you realize that I couldn't find the child anymore in the process table. So what happened was that rather than a zombie process, which I called it in the previous video, what happened under the hood was that an orphan process was actually created. Okay, so let me just do a quick recap of these concepts for you so that you can understand them better. So right here, let me just show you a brief rundown of our code. All right, so the first thing we realized was that the parent actually executed first and terminates before the child, which is the first one right here. The second thing we saw is that the child becomes an orphan because his parent da died while it was still alive. So the child was actually sleeping for 40 seconds. It means that the child was still alive. All right, but then the parent had died. So that phenomenon is what we call an orphan process. So the child being alive while the parent is, you know, has died. I think that's much more descriptive. So that's the accurate explanation, not a zombie. All right, so the third thing is that the, need, the init process during that time where the parent has died, but yet the child is still alive. This init process, which happens to be the mother of all processes within your terminal, actually adopts the child and becomes its parent until it terminates. So the adoption uh, of the child by the init process actually changes the PPID of the child to one. All right, so one is actually the PID of the, of the init process. So during, um, while the child is executing, if you realize when we ran that our PS command, um, the, the PPID of the child changed to one because the init process had adopted the child. The other, one to, the other thing to take note of is that the, the init process then removes, or the much more technical word is rip. Okay, so it rips the child from the process table after its execution. So this explains why we couldn't find the child process in the process table with the PSEF command. Okay, software engineers, um, there you have it. Now, why did I take my time to go through the rigors of explaining this? Number one is because I appreciate understanding. All right, so it's not just about um, doing the projects or getting stuff done before the deadline, but it's about truly understanding the concepts because it gives you power and independence to actually build stuff by yourself, helps you think intuitively. And then because of, secondly, because of the previous video which I did where I, you know, um, innocently misinformed a lot of you and I felt really bad about that. I literally lost sleep about that. So I had to respond to that quickly with this video. All right, then. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I know we did not get to talk about the zombie process, but it's all good. The video is already getting too long and there's so much information that has been dished out. So... Um, I have to truncate it right here so I can assimilate everything that has been said. All right, so in, our, in the succeeding videos, we'll be talking about the weight system core and a bunch of other things to help us build our own shell. So um, if you like the video as usual, go ahead and like it. You know, if you have friends that would like such content, go ahead and share it. And um, I think that's all from me for now. I'll see you in the next one.